You are welcome to another video of the course F5 Big IP LTM. In this section, we will discuss F5 LTM SNAT configuration, which is required in some LTM applications like SSL offloading, which we have discussed in the previous section, and one arm topology, which we will discuss in the future. In this section, we will see some SNAT configuration examples using AutoMap and SNAT pool. The first question that may arise is why we need to configure SNAT in F5 Big IP. There are some scenarios where SNAT needs to be implemented in F5 Big IP. If you remember, we implemented SSL offloading in the previous section and found that configuring SNAT in the virtual server is necessary because the traffic between client and F5 is HTTPS and traffic between F5 and internal servers is HTTP and traffic with the client real IP address cannot reach the internal server. Therefore, the client IP address must be translated into a big IP address before reaching internal server. For the second example, let's assume that big IP is not the gateway of the clients in an enterprise and a router serve as the gateway if we don't implement SNAT in big IP traffic back and forth between client and server will not be routed over big IP the client over the internet reaches the big IP virtual IP according to the load balancing algorithm the request is forwarded to one of the internal servers the source IP address of the request traffic is not changed and the client IP address remains unchanged. Therefore, the destination IP address of the return traffic is the client itself. And return traffic is not routed via big IP because the server's gateway point to the router and not to the big IP. In this topology, a 5 does not behave as a full proxy and therefore some of F5 features such as SSL offloading cannot be implemented. But in the right figure, the client IP address is changed to the big IP before the request is forwarded to the big IP. Therefore, the destination IP address of the return traffic points to the big IP and forwarded via big IP. In this figure, big IP is behaving as a full proxy solution and we take full advantage of F5 LTM features. In the left figure, the source IP address of the client will be unchanged, but in the right figure, the IP address of the client will be changed to the big IP and therefore the return traffic also will be forwarded through the big IP and therefore here big IP can behave like a full proxy solution and we can take advantage of all F5 big IP features. Before you start implementing SNAT on F5 big IP, it may be interesting to connect to the virtual server and capture the traffic on F5 big IP to ensure that the big IP does not change the source IP address of the clients by default when the request is forwarded to the internal server. This is the command to capture traffic matching the client IP address 192.168.2.175 and port 80 on F5 big IP and store them in a file with the name of before a snat before source snat dot pcap the s parameter specifies how many bytes of each packet to be captured s0 means unlimited and therefore the full packets will be captured the parameter i 0, 0.0 means to capture traffic from all interfaces except the management interface the number of n indicate how deep you want to capture the traffic and p parameter allows you to capture a specific traffic flow from n to n even when the configuration uses a snat or one k 
connect let's run the command and capture the traffic and then we connect to the virtual IP to 100 and then we refresh once again and then we stop the capture and then we can download the file to the local computer to open with the Wireshark what was the name before is the name and download and then we open the file with Wireshark open in the and then before and open if we filter the capture traffic by client IP address as the source IP dot source to 170 175 and destination in the server subnet 10 slash 10 0 slash 24 and then it shows that the traffic reaches the server with the client IP address with 2.175 reaches to the server for example the second server 10.112 we are connect to the second server as you can see here so by default the source IP address of the client is not translated when the traffic is forwarded through the big IP to the internal server. In the next step, we enable SNAT on the virtual server, web server, virtual server, and search for the keyword translate. To enable SNAT, you can manually configure to which address the client address needs to be translated with SNAT. We will see this in a few minutes, but for now, let's use the easier and preferred automap method. Through the automap, big IP self IP of the outgoing interface is used as translated address, and we don't need to configure SNAT pool. When floating self IP is configured on the big IP, it is preferred over outgoing interface self IP to support outgoing interface failover which we will discuss in a few minutes and then here we update after enabling SNAT we can again connect to the virtual server and capture traffic and save it in a new file with the name of after source NAT after source NAT for example and copy copy command paste and we connect again to the virtual IP and stop the TCP dump command and then we download the file with the name of after download and then we open after this time when you open the file in the Wireshark you will see that no traffic is reaching the server with the client source IP address there is no output if you change the Wireshark filter to only show traffic to the destination in the server subnet you will notice that traffic reaches the server with the IP address of big IP 10 1 the big IP self IP address 10 1 to 10 111 the first web server as you can see here and this is the result of enabling a SNAT automap without giving any SNAT pool the big IP automatically translate the client IP address to IP address of the big IP itself.
the self IP of the outgoing interface which is internal interface when the packet is forwarded to the client side. As I have said, SNAT with AutoMap prefers floating IP to support outgoing interface failover. To check this, let's create a new floating IP address on the internal network in the big IP interface in the network section in the self IP. There, these are the current IP address of the big IP 10 one for the internal and two 186 for the external interface and we can create a new interface for example floating underline internal it is floating that means it's not binded to any interface uh, like loopback interface and this is floating and IP address for example 102 with the mass 3255 and then 0 and it is related to the internal interface and finish now a new floating self IP address is created in the big IP which must be preferred over the outgoing interface self IP or 10 1 now again we connect to the virtual server and capture traffic again this time with the name of after source NAT with underline auto map and then we connect again to the virtual IP address and then web server 3 and stop the capture download the capture to the local computer after but with automap and download and again we open with wireshark and this time a destination just the destination ip address you can see no packet with the ip address of the client reaches to the server subnet but if we filter based on the destination address you see the source IP address of traffic that reaches to the server are 102 which is the floating IP address of the big IP this is exactly what I wanted to show you and finally we enable a SNAT to translate the client address into an address configured in a SNAT pool or manual SNAT. First, we have to create a SNAT pool in the local traffic and address translation and a SNAT pool, a new pool with the name of SNAT underline pool one and the IP address, for example, 10, 7 and 10, 8 two IP address or three ad IP address in the pool 10, 7, 10, 8, 10, 9 and then we change the configuration of source node in the virtual server to manual SNAT and to the IP address that we have just configured SNAT underline pool 1 and then update and we can check again to capture the traffic of the source NAT without automap, for example. And then we connect to the virtual IP to 100. We are connected to the server 3 and then server 2 multiple time refresh and then stop the capture and again download the capture file to the local computer without automap and again download open the new captured file 
if we check again the source of the client you see there is no traffic but if you filter the captured packet just with the destination IP address in the server subnet you see this time the source IP address is 10.7 and 10.8 which is the IP address configured in the SNAT pool 